The Qinghai Tibet Highway is the world's highest national road, with an average elevation of 14,000 feet above sea level. While gazing up at the Kunlun Mountains, the pilgrim traverses the plateau. Nomadic tribespeople were once the sole residents of the plateau. The trucks head toward the highest peak of the highway, Tangala Pass. The driver is stricken with an intense headache caused by high altitude sickness. Recently, there has been an increase in the number of people visiting the highlands of Qinghai, Tibet. Even now, Tibet's traditions remain steadfast here. The final destination, Lhasa. The centerpiece is Patala Palace. We've traveled 1,200 miles of the Qinghai Tibet Highway. The provincial capital of Qinghai Province, Xining, located in the northwestern region of China, with Tibet to the south, is gaining prominence as a transportation hub linking China to Central Asia. The city of Xining has also undergone a great transformation in keeping with the economic development of China. New buildings are constructed one after another. With a population of 2.6 million, comprised of the Hans, Tibetans, Mongols, Hues, and other ethnic groups, 37 ethnic groups coexist here. Following their path along the Qinghai-Tibet Highway, we will pass Lake Qinghai and enter the Swaidam Basin. Once we pass the city of Golmud in the Swaidam Basin and the Kunlun Mountains, we will enter the plateau known as the rooftop of the world. Finally, after traversing the hazardous Tangela Pass, we will arrive in Lhasa. We have traveled 90 miles from Xining. Beyond the green fields, you can see Lake Qinghai. Come July, the green fields are in full bloom. The area around Lake Qinghai is one of several noted for the production of canola oil in China. The blue water of Lake Qinghai resembles an ocean. Qinghai province was named after the lake. The lake has an area of 1,770 square miles. Lake Qinghai is China's largest saltwater lake. The area around Lake Qinghai was previously undeveloped and uninhabited. Only the military used the highway. A curious reddish-brown structure remains at the lake. The Chinese People's Liberation Army used the base as a torpedo testing site. The base was constructed in 1965 for ongoing testing. It was abandoned at the end of 1970, and the area around the lake is currently being developed for agricultural purposes. As we pass Lake Qinghai, the farmlands disappear and the vast grasslands unfold as far as the eye can see. We encounter herds of sheep crossing the highway.
Nomads in search of grazing lands migrate with their livestock and families. One family may own 600 head of sheep and 100 to 300 head of yak. An average yearly income is about $1,200 US. Come nightfall, nomads move their livestock closer to their tent. A one-month-old sheep is unable to cross the pool of water. Sheep are a valuable asset to nomads and also their source of food. This is the sheep's mother. Highway enters the Swaidam Basin. We have traveled 400 miles from Shini. Called the Valley of Treasure, beneath the desert floor lie rich natural resources of petroleum and natural gas. A city appears in the desert. It is Golmud. Golmud was created in 1954 to coincide with the Qinghai-Tibet highway opening. Back then, many of the residents were connected to construction companies hired by the military. After that, the city developed as a strategic transportation point. A train has pulled in at Golmud Station. A train trip from Xining to Golmud takes 15 hours. This is the last stop. Work is in progress to extend the railroad line, with plans for the train to run to Lhasa in 10 months. This is the bus stop in front of Golmud Station. Those travelers bound for Lhasa transfer from the train to the bus. The bus from Golmud to Lhasa takes 24 hours. The bus holds 40 passengers. An upper sleeping berth costs $20. A lower berth is $21. There are many young girls gathered around the buses selling supplies for the trip. They're selling large rubber bags to passengers. Inside the bag is oxygen. The highway is at an elevation of 17,161 feet, and the passengers fear high altitude sickness. A bag sells for $2. One bag will last about 15 minutes. This is the sixth trip to Lhasa for the transport unit. This is the long distance bus that left Golmud. At an elevation of 11,000 feet and with a lack of oxygen, gasoline does not burn properly. With 36 passengers, the bus is nearly full.
As the altitude rises, some people start feeling sick. On this rainy July day, the temperature is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. And in midwinter, daytime temperatures can fall to 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Families, tourists, students on summer vacation, and migrant workers comprise the passengers on the bus. and restaurants catering to truck drivers cluster around the Kunlun Mountains. Located 80 miles from Gonlud and 86 miles to the next city, this is the only rest stop in between. Because a well was dug and water connected, many businesses were opened. We came upon a Sichuan restaurant with a new sign hung out front. The restaurant is at an elevation of 14,000 feet. Because of the low air pressure, rice must be cooked with a pressure cooker. Even then, it does not steam completely, and the rice comes out al dente. Trucks arrive even in the dead of night. The restaurant is open 24 hours, and the kitchen opens whenever customers show up. This is the ascent towards the Quinlan Mountains, 600 miles from Xining. Through this pass, we cross the Quinlan Mountains. No truck travels faster than six miles per hour due to the steep incline, and this truck is carrying the maximum cargo. The Quinlan Mountain Pass is at 16,000 feet above sea level. Crossing the Quinlan Mountains, we come to the massive Qinghai Kohujili Nature Preserve. Tibetan antelope with an impressive running speed of 50 miles per hour is said to be the pride of Kohujili. wild donkey. There are many domesticated donkeys, but wild donkeys live solely in Kuhushili. The Kuhushili Natural Reserve was created in 1997, primarily to protect animals from poachers. In the 1980s, there were 100,000 antelopes, but poachers had reduced their numbers to 50,000.
This is the Sunan Sali Nature Preserve Center. The forestry officer and three assistants are on duty. There are four centers within the Kukushili Nature Preserve area. Tibetan antelope fur is lightweight and soft, and a fur shawl can sell for several thousand dollars. The nature preserve also operates an animal rescue center. Mu Ma warms milk three times a day. The animal rescue facility is fenced off. Its size is 17 acres. Separated from his mother and weak, he was brought to the preserve to be cared for. The grasslands are full of wolves and condors, which must be protected if they are to endure. The Tibetan antelope will be nursed for six months and returned to the grasslands if it is able to fend for itself. <laughs> Qinghai Tibet Railroad is running a test rail car. This steel bridge is China's first and spans the great river Songjiang. It is a half mile long. Inspection and maintenance of the tracks is progressing in anticipation of the railway opening. Working on the tracks are migrant laborers. 40 workers are responsible for 43 miles of track. They are now repairing the tracks to make them level. This is long, arduous work when done at an elevation of 15,000 feet. It's lunchtime. Food is delivered. <laughs> Stir-fried beans and pork are served over rice. <laughs> the servings for 40 people quickly disappear. Wages for experienced workers are $620 U.S. a month. Because it is backbreaking work, the salary is far higher than that of a normal job.
These are the Tangela Mountains. Passing through these mountains at an elevation of 20,000 feet, we enter the Tibet Autonomous Region. The most difficult part of the highway is the ascent into the Tangela Mountains. Snow falls even in summer, and there is a high wind velocity in the region. The trucks advance slowly. Because the roads around here have been constructed from frozen soil that has been paved over, they soon fall into disrepair. Even the most experienced driver can't escape the excruciating headaches of high altitude sickness. This is the Tangela Pass. Summer temperatures are below freezing, and in winter, temperatures fall to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The elevation is 17,161 feet. Vegetation blooms alongside the highway. of the rocky mountains along the Namtso lake shore is a small Buddhist training center. There are 93 miles left to Lhasa. We arrive at the town of Dangshong. Of the 42,000 people living here, 90% are Tibetans. Dangshong is a city of herders. Sheep fur and meat are shipped to Lhasa via the highway. The railroad station will soon be operational. Every August, the annual horse race festival is held. This is an important day where ethnic tradition and pride are highlighted. The festival opens with trick riding on horseback. The horse is essential for the nomads living on the vast grasslands. For the young nomad boy, this day is his chance to shine center stage. He will display the skills passed on from father to son. The race course is a mile long. There is also a bazaar Many vendors from every region are here. <laughs> items sold are clothing, hats, shoes, and other everyday items. 
The majority of customers are nomads from the grasslands. The traditional dance is beginning. This dancing is based on the Tibetan people's work songs and movements. The colorful costumes make one forget the passing of time. We've traveled 1,200 miles from Xining. Lhasa is just over the horizon. Lhasa in Tibetan means land of the gods. It is the center of politics and finance within the Tibet Autonomous Region and is the sacred site for Tibetan Buddhism. Potala Palace stands regally overlooking the city of Lhasa. The long distance bus which departed Xining, the starting point of the Qinghai Highway, has arrived. Traveling nonstop, it has taken 40 hours. Patala Palace is 380 feet high. It has 13 stories with a thousand rooms. Construction started in the 7th century and was completed in the 17th. This is the road approaching the Jokhan Temple. is now a mix of the traditional and modern. 